Ronnie Dale, four-wheeling in westernaustralia.com and welcome to another modified episode. This time we have a Prado 90. So a lot of people have been hanging out for this. So I reckon we get the owner in straight away and we find out what it's about. Alan, how are you, mate? How are you doing? Good, mate. Uh, set up for touring? All set up for touring, mate. All set up for touring. Excellent. So, so do you want to just run us through the, the specs on the, on the 90? Uh, it's just a 98 model. 90 series Prado GXL, uh, 3.4 V6, uh, automatic. Excellent. Is it constant four-wheel drive? Constant four-wheel drive, yeah. Nice. I think we should uh, get straight into it. Oh, yeah. It's a bar work and exterior mods, so we'll cover everything on the exterior of the vehicle now. Start with your bar work. Rock armour. Rock armour supplied by a powerful 4x4. Interesting, I've never seen a rock armor before, so this is a first, first for me. It's the uh, deluxe bar, deluxe winch bar. Winch compatible. Yep. So let's talk about your winch then, Runva. Uh, Runva 11 XP, synthetic rope. Use it much? No, not for myself, no. Uh, yeah, normal pulling other people out. But <laughs> yeah, not That's too much for myself. Says that. I haven't pulled myself out with haven't it yet. Haven't pulled yourself out, okay. So it's paid for itself by pulling someone else out? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, good, good security. So, there's the bash plates in this one. I notice you've got wing plates. And this bash plate here. Obviously come with a bar. Yep. And followed underneath. These are all factory. All factory bash plates underneath. Is this one steel or plastic? This one? Steel. Steel. Yeah, they're all steel up front. Steel. Yeah. And one plastic one down the side near the fuel tank. Have you used them much? Oh, I've had a few knocks, but... Oh, um, you had a few skids on them, yeah? Yeah. I like how you've got a big hot gap here, or hole, to get to your winch. Slightly modified there, but... Uh, oh, you made it a bit bigger? Yeah, nice and easy to get your hand in there. Your lights? Uh, just eBay, 405 watt they claim, LED, so they actually are pretty bright. These are not too bad. So spread? Yeah, and 300 plus metres down the road, so not too bad. Enough for what you need? Yeah, more than enough. Do you do much night driving? Have done, but uh, but yeah, not... not a too much. Yeah, yeah. So. you try and avoid it or? Yeah, generally try and avoid it, but on the bigger trips we've done, um, oh, you, you've got to cover in. a few kilometres and mm. yeah, drive to late to the night to sort of cover some ground. 4.5 dB? 4.5 dB, um, 80 channel, unit end uh, UHF, so. Okay range? Good it's range? not too bad, good enough between the cars and convoy. So you, you're happy with side steps? <laughs> no, no, they'll get replaced with rock sliders. Um, sooner so or later. More, more, more coming. Yeah, yeah, there's a couple more, but mm. probably 80% finished. Around the back of the vehicle now. You've been to the Kimberley, that's for sure. Yep. Yeah, two trips. Two trips up there? Yeah. You Looks like you covered the whole region, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much did. Both between the two trips, we spread it around and, yeah, got to see. Wolf got Creek. to see heaps, yeah. Bungle, bungle. Yep. The <laughs> overseas viewers, they'll probably... No Wolf Creek is something a bit different? Yes. Oh yeah, you got Mick Taylor up here? <laughs> yeah, Mick Taylor's there. <laughs> Welcome to Australia. So wheel carrier, this is your stock wheel, wheel carrier? Yep. Uh, you mentioned something off camera before that you are looking at... Twin wheel carrier going on the back. Twin wheel carrier? Yeah. Is that... So, okay, so you want to carry two spares. Do you carry two at the moment? Got one on the roof. You got one on the roof. And this one, so all six right. wheels all up. Six wheels all up. So we'll get to the one on the roof soon. Rubbish bag? Just rubbish. Good to see. Proper recovery point yeah, here. Yeah. I like what you've done here with the cable tie. That's actually a good tip. So you don't lose the pin. Yeah, yeah, I generally keep them in mounted up and mm. yeah, I'll see a lot of gravel roads, a lot of corrugations and it doesn't take much. Yeah. I know countless people that have lost one. No, we know a few guys. <laughs> we know a few guys have lost them on yeah. the tracks. Go to use it and it's not there. Before we get to the roof rack, your fuel tank around the back, we forgot to talk about that. Yeah. So how big is that fuel tank? Uh, 160, 170 litres, uh, well over 1,300 kilometre range, closer to 1,400 kilometres. So you've got two tanks? Yes. Uh, I've oh. got the 69 litre sub tank up front, plus the long range at the back. Okay, so the long range replaced the 90 litre? 90 litre original. And then this, the additional tank is? 69 litres 69 standard. litres. Yep. Alright, so that flows into <coughs> the back one? No, nah, separate fuel pumps. Separate fuel pumps? Yep. That's actually a good idea, because you get a fuel pump that just dies on you. Yep. You can then just switch over, you, you, you got a double chance. What type of rack is it? Uh, I'm not too sure, but it's basically the same one that the Supercenter sell. 
So I picked up from a guy uh, locally around Perth, off uh, Gumtree. Olive Jack, you use it much? Only at home, when I've done some, obviously doing some work on the car. Never used it out bush. Well, you can actually lift the front of your car, <coughs> yep. and you can lift the back of your yeah, car. Yeah, yeah. And but I've not... also got the hooks for the tyres as well, so I can lift the rim up. Oh, the lift mate yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In case you're wondering what they are, they're two hooks that hook into your rim, and then it butts up against the tyre, and it actually, that's the best way to use your high lift jack as well. Yeah, safer. Because otherwise, yeah, otherwise yeah. you got to stretch it right out too. Yeah, yeah. So there's your spare tyre we spoke about. I oh, only got a factory rim on there too. Yes, yep. Water tank? No, that's just for fishing rods. Oh, fishing rods. Oh, righto. I saw that yep, pipe coming out, I thought it was a... No, it's yeah, access at the that's back. That's your shovel on the back, eh? Yeah, yep. Chainsaw? Yeah, it's just a small chainsaw for firewood. Normally comes track. with you? Always, yep. And what's in the bag up here? Uh, that's hot plate, just a big size. You like your fire cooking then? Yeah, yep. Beautiful. And you got some treads up here that look very well used. Yeah, not too well used from me. <laughs> <laughs> no. Getting other people out of bogs again. <laughs> yep, well there we go again. No one pulls themselves out, it's always yeah. someone else. Yeah. <laughs> so the final piece on the roof rack, which we almost, well I, I oversaw, yeah. was the awning. And that's a fairly decent length awning, two and a half? Two and a half metre by two metres. Two and a half by two. There's a light strip, full length, double length, double road light strip through it. All right, Alan, lift and tyres. Start with your tyres. Yep, BFG uh, KM2s. Uh, what are they, 265 by 75 by 16? Uh, yeah, good tyres as far as I'm concerned. How, how long have you had these for? Uh, they've been on for, you know, the two years or so I've had the car, so. Oh, they've been on for two years? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So don't. obviously do a bit of travelling. They do uh, a lot of travelling, yeah. <laughs> how many Ks do you reckon? Uh, I'm not too sure. I've Probably only about 30 odd thousand, um, if that. This car's purely used for, um, Just for getting going away. away, so it's not a daily drive at all. Yeah, okay. So this 35,000 kilometres is mainly hard, you going <laughs> hard kilometres, yes, yes. Yeah, okay. Well, that's a good testament to the vehicle then. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Factory <coughs> steel rims? Factory, factory rims, um, yeah, six rims. A bit of extra information for the audience. What tyre pressure with a vehicle this weight, what tyre pressure you run on the beach? On the beach, I'll go down to sort of 15, 18, somewhere around there. Um, obviously, softer the sand, which we do here, have here in WA. Yes, we do. I'll go down to you know, 12 max sort of thing. 12. Yeah. That's pretty low. But it's, yeah. yeah, but, but sometimes it's been warranted. <laughs> yeah, yes. definitely. But those Highway? mud, mud tyres seem to go really well on, on the sand, so mm. better yeah, than do. the tyres that were originally on this well, well, one and my blast. Prada. Okay, what do you have on before? Maxis 771s. What pressure are you running on the highway? Uh, around the 34, 36. 34, 36. And what about when you hit corrugation? Gibb River Road, I've just gone down to 24 and found that's quite nice. Your suspension lift, what have we got in it? Uh, it's two inch tough dog. So I think they're 150 kilo bus springs in the front and plus 300 kilo in the rear. Are they adjustable? Uh, the rears are adjustable, the front's not. Engine bay time, the V6 petrol. Snorkel? Yeah, just uh, one of eBay, um, fitted myself. That's about the sixth one now I think I've done now. <laughs> so, fitted up a few. Helped a few mates out then? Yes. <laughs> no struts on the 90? No, no. That is one tidy engine bay, considering all the travel you do. Yep. Because I know you just came back from the gold fields and that is bulldust. <laughs> yes, there was a lot of bulldust out there. Well, this car's done about four trips in the, in the last five, six weeks. So, week long up through the station country up north. And then followed by a few three day weekends, so. Excellent. Has it missed the beat? No, nah, no. Nah. No, nah, very reliable. How many kilometres? Uh, nearly 390,000. 390,000? Yes, nearly. Just, That's just coming up to it. That's Toyota, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> uh, it doesn't miss a beat. But have you replaced anything in here at all? Uh, only the K&N filter. Um, everything else I've just added the extra bits. Uh, the battery is obviously bigger than standard. The so one, one battery in here, you obviously have another battery in the back. Yes. Somewhere. 
winch isolation. Yes. You know, to look out for in this vehicle, like you may have seen on forums or anything like that with the 90. Not particularly, they're fairly well bulletproof little little uh, setup. Suggest keeping them stand and keeping it what Toyota has designed it for. Mm. And it's well within its, um, yeah, powerful enough for the little motor and just that little bit thirstier, so there's only drama. We're now going to have a look inside the vehicle. Now, when we look at the back, all your power supply is on the other side of the cargo barrier. Yes. So we'll kind of do all this in one hit, yep. and then we'll go to the interior afterwards. But uh, this will be the main feature of the vehicle. It's a really neat power board on the other side. Let's open up the cargo area. All right. Start with the fridge, eh? That's a big one. Yeah, 78 litre, ARB, 78 litre fridge. 78 litre fridge. And then the uh, drop down slide. So that's where you carry all your water pretty much when you go away? Yeah, so obviously depending on the trip, where we're going and how long we're going to be gone for and how many jerrys I'll take. Mm. But yeah, it gives me 60 litres, obviously gravity fed, untapped, so. A oh, collapsible bucket up there for doing mm. dishes or whatever? Yeah, collapsible kettle up there as well. Fire extinguisher? Yeah, yep. Is that for your cooking? <laughs> no. <laughs> Recovery straps. First aid, alternator, tyre repair, uh, spare snatch strap, winch extension strap, bit of a base plate if we need it for the, uh, for the jack. For the jacks. That's a good base plate to have because then you can use it with a bottle jack as well. Mm. Yep. You going to do any mods to the door here? <laughs> I've thrown the idea around for a drop down table. But but it might seem a bit in the way here. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm not convinced see. it's going to work for me. Mm, fair enough. Drawers, is this custom? Yeah, yeah, all homemade. Uh, me and my dad made all these up at his place. Nice, neat job. So it's, um, yeah, a few, few designs before we come to this one. But, um, yeah, once we fitted this one up, that's pretty much what we, what I designed up. So you've got an aluminium frame with plywood? That's all, yeah, it's all plywood. Um, the... Trimmings are just to neaten all the edges up. Okay. What are we carrying this one? So, uh, mostly empty at the moment, but a bit more recovery gear. Generally sits in there and then, um, depending on where we're going, how much food I'm taking, how much dry food and all that sort of stuff. Mm. Then I like what you've done with, with the drawer, how just, there's no... <laughs> no rollers, no yeah. wasted space with rollers. You can actually pull this all the way out if you need to. Yeah, yeah, nothing, nothing's locked in there. Beautiful. But um, yeah, no rattles, no, no nothing, so. Excellent, and lightweight. Yeah, I mean, daughter can get in there and out, no dramas. And pretty much the same deal again. But just cook in that's and your, then... That's your food storage? Yeah, yep, yeah, generally. So you've got a big space here, so what do you normally put in here? All your tents and stuff, or...? No, I don't take tents with me, but, you know, bags, um, whatever need to do. I've got plenty of room to... I've got mm. more than enough room that I need. So generally it's me and my daughter in this car, or... When my dad come, does actually come away with me a fair bit. So when do you go camping then? So you don't use tents, you use swag it then? Yeah, swag. Uh, stretcher, if um, if we're using a stretcher, but uh, the last few trips I've just swagged straight, straight on the ground. On the ground. Under the awning, so I've got the side walls come out for the awning as well. So it makes us quite a good little oh, area. Yeah, nice wind block as well. Mm, yeah. Is that a little hatch? Yep. Uh, more spare parts and... Tools and... Yeah. So it's just another little hideaway for a few more bits and pieces. So just to use up that underfloor space. And then you've got the wheel arch under there. And then squeezed in with the wheel arch, I've got full set of belts, full set of uh, hoses, uh, radio uh, hose yes. and all that. That's all accessed from the front. Mm. And yep. yeah, under that side, uh, there's all tool rolls. Two, Ooh. cut the tool rolls in there. Secret compartment there. Yeah. <laughs> that raised bit, That's is that what a battery is? Battery box, yes. It's, uh -huh. it's, it is a big battery sitting in there. 120 amp? 260 amp. 260 amp. 260 amp hour battery. In one battery? Yeah. Is that a lithium? AGM. AGM? 260, I don't even know if you could get a 260 amp battery. Yes, enough. There are, there are plenty around. Yeah. But right. yeah, never have to worry about power when I put it No, one. you don't. <laughs> no. Yeah. And so, you only run in the one fridge. And freezer in the front. Oh, you got a freezer in the front? It's a 40 litre freezer. Let's move to the front. <laughs> so we are about to hop into the 90, the Prado 90, and to have a look at the power board and all the stuff. Alan's got going on here. Right, Alan. That is a neat power board you got going on here. 
Nice. Where should we start? Probably the heart of the system, the, the battery maybe. <laughs> oh yeah, your, your 260 amp hour AGM battery. Yes. Yep. That is mammoth. So yeah, heaps of power for everything. Never have to worry about power. Yeah. How much does that battery weigh? 63 kilos. 60, 63 kilos? Yes. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> All right. A projector. What, is that, what does that thing do? That's the uh, power inverter. It's, it's uh, what, 600 watt power inverter. Okay. So 600 power watt inverter. And that runs out. See that power board up top? Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's just for charging. Uh, laptops for charging cameras and all that. All right, what do we got here? So you got two, uh, oh, they're the fridge monitors. The yeah, wireless monitors. fridge monitors. Um, doesn't quite have them, quite work having the two. They seem to like to pick each other up. So. Oh, they're cross-referencing each cross other. Cross-referencing each other. So yeah, you quite often got to re reset them so it picks up the freezer sort of thing. So. Okay. What do we got over here? Uh, that's just the distribution. The fuse box, obviously. For the fridges, for a power setup, I've got in the corner down there. Um, this one runs through a circuit breaker. Um, a hundred amp circuit breaker. Yep, that's yep. good size. And On the other side, there's another circuit breaker, which is for all this side of the system. And then obviously there's a circuit breaker in the engine bay as it comes off the first battery straight away. We're going to look at the Red Arc um, BCDC charger and uh, you'll note that it is put inside the vehicle and it's close to the second battery. A lot of people put them in the front and then run a wire to the second battery. That's not how you put them in. It's too far away from the battery. So you've got it here, so it's within a meter. Uh, yes, yep, 40 amp uh, DC-DC charger. Uh, is that solar panel ready, sir? It is solar panel ready. There's a uh, Anderson plug down there for it. But, uh, okay, do you I, run solar panels much? Only at home if this, when this isn't being used. Yep. So that keeps everything charged while I'm at home. What about when you camp, do you camp up in any places for a while? Generally I don't camp up for more than a day or two. I generally keep moving. Right, you'll be like me, uh, keep moving, yeah. keep moving, keep moving. So, so our bush I don't need solar panel. What have we got up here? That's just a display monitor for for the uh, inverter. Oh, display monitor for the inverter? Okay. Yeah, yeah. You can't run it all straight off there, but I had it, so I'm mounted it. It's just a little bit easier to access, and I can actually monitor it from the rear vision mirror while I'm driving. So all this is I can monitor while I'm driving. What's yeah. the one under? Uh, BM1, it's battery monitor. So it tells me how much power's coming out, how long until it's empty, and tells me how much power's going in, and how long until it's going to be charged. So the only wire that comes from the front is going to this. Yes. So here's your other fridge, or well, you use it as a freezer. How big is that one? It's a 40 litre Iron Man. And uh, yeah, that just keeps me meat and all whatnot frozen. Got Saves throwing meat out when I get home because I haven't, because it's defrosted. <laughs> Goes all right? Yes. Yeah, it hasn't missed a beat the whole time. Uh, she works good. Keep your swags in the back here? Uh, yes. And your table? Yep. It's all a handy little table, seems to fit in there just right. Just open this side. Oh, here we go. Oh, you got a compressor down here too. Yeah, that's all mounted there. Easy access. Hoses and the rest of it are up behind that gear. And that's where you carry your swags. And your chairs are down here. So the back seats you've pulled out to get gain more storage. Yes, yep. Okay. So well that that well that'll help a lot because you've essentially made it a big wagon. Yes, yep. And you only need the two two seats yeah, in the yeah. front. Yeah, generally yes, yep. Excellent. So it's a bit of a module system in the back. I can set the set the back up to different to suit whatever the trip I'm doing, and mm. yeah, whoever I decide to set up for a particular trip. That's a great option, guys. Like uh, a lot of vehicles that we feature on modified have the actual back seats out, and it's actually pretty quick to put back in. It's just a lazy barrier you got across, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. four four bolts, I think, and it's back in. But mm. well, it does help you. You're just using this vehicle for trips, though, eh? Yes, yes. Yeah. This isn't a daily driver at all. You get a lot of room, eh, when you pull the seats out. Yeah. So you got your organiser there. You couldn't really see that before. No. That's where you hang your hose. Another fire extinguisher. That's good to see. Two fire yeah. extinguishers. And you can access the back here. Power station down there for uh, recharging phones and bits and pieces. And obviously, uh, my light for the awning plugs into there as well. Yeah, and it just runs in through there. And you just shut the door and it goes through the seal? Yeah, yeah. That's your inflator. What do you what do you deflate with? I just use this. 
I just use that as well. Yeah, you just plug in mine and yeah. It's not, okay. not the quickest way to do it, but it does it fine. Does the job. Interior time. Because you have two different navigation systems here. Yep, the HEMA HN7 and I'll see iPad, iPad mini. Okay, which one do you prefer using? Well, there's a bit of a mix between them, but the iPad is easier to use. Um, a bit easier to pan around the pages and, and the rest of it, but um, but yeah, they, they both come into their own, really. And that's, is that the HEMA app that's on it? That's not the HEMA, that's uh, Mud Maps Mud is maps. on that, so it gives me a different selection of maps than obviously between More the options. two. Yeah, mm. I have one map dis displaying different information and one map displaying more. You know, you zoom in, have one zoomed in out, zoomed in nice and close and one zoomed out for uh, the whole area. That's what I do too. Yeah. Sub fuel tank. Yes. So did this come with the car? Yeah, yeah, that's all standard. Okay. Uh, oh, your radio. Yep. Unit then. Oh yeah, secure down there. Yeah, yep. And that's where your handset is. Uh, and then apart from that, just the uh, wireless remote for the for the winch. For the winch. Q and A time. It's an interesting top on this beverage here. Now, obviously, don't drink and drive. Uh, we are having lunch, and it'll be quite a while before we actually leave here. Oh, let's get nice and relaxed. Oh. Ah. So Q and A. Something I noticed before, young veterans. So were you in the Navy, the Army or the Air Force? Army. Ten years in the Army. Top three things that you have done, like your favourite things you've done. I'd have to be the fridge would be number one probably. <laughs> fridge, drawers, yeah, just the, the drawers, the rear setup, and the uh, yeah, the electrical system in it. So all your DIY stuff. Yes, yeah, mm. it's all DI. <laughs> yeah. It's all, all um, home done, so. I reckon it's the best stuff. I mean, that's that's what I look forward to when I shoot feature vehicles, shoot yep. vehicles, is all the DIY, especially with the electrics and the back drawers and all that. What do you say is the worst part about the Prado? We have to be fuel economy for them. They're, they're a little bit thirsty, but what you expect for a bigger car, I guess, and um, yeah, doing what we're doing with them. And 1998 vehicles. Yeah, well. yeah. So, fuel was a bit cheaper back in them days. Yes, it <laughs> would be good to have a better fuel economy on them, but mm. it doesn't bother me too much. It's, yeah, I'm what I expect. It's better than mine. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, what's the best thing about the vehicle? Just the reliability of it. Just, it's, uh, yeah, they're fairly well made and fairly well bulletproof as long as you're at least 390,000 kilometres and it still drives really well. Mm. So, I don't think it's missed a beat its whole life. And, you just replace a few bits that could be, you know, vulnerable to getting damaged, such as, you know, suspension and tyres. Mm. And then from there, you basically just add on all the bits that are going to suit what you're doing with the car. Off-road-wise, being a, I wouldn't say short wheelbase, but it's definitely like a, a mid-wheelbase. Yep. Pretty nimble around the tight tracks. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, place like the Holland track, there's a couple of tight areas there, and, you know, a lot of the tracks that I go looking for are overgrown. I don't... I try and keep off the the, uh, the common tracks and find the more remote, quiet yeah. tracks. And yeah, scooting in around the bushes and all that, it's definitely a bonus. How often do you three point turn in this thing? Not too much, because I don't normally turn around, no matter how bad the track gets, I normally keep going. <laughs> keep going, excellent. So, yep. Yeah, she's definitely well used. Yeah, definitely got a few pinstripe and bush that's, stripes on it. That's what they're made for. So what made you choose the Prado? Generally, it's the size. I've got mates with 80 series and 100 series. And by the time we put the big tyres on them and two inch lift on it, me trying to get into the rear drawers, yes, I need a ladder. <laughs> yeah, okay, fair enough. <laughs> so, the good thing is the size for me, and it's, uh, yeah, just a budget tourer, which is reliable. So that, That's actually a great point. A yeah. budget tourer, yeah. that's reliable. What's your top advice for people who buy a stock <laughs> Prado? I mean, there's not too much to look out for, I guess. Uh, as far as problems are with them there's not a lot of problems i haven't heard of a lot of problems that they you know common with them mm. so they seem to be fairly well thought out so to all those people that keep saying oh, i have a ten thousand dollar budget what do you recommend i buy <coughs> i recommend you buy something like this 
something that's yeah reliable quite cheap we'll get you anyway yeah it'll go 90 percent of the big cars will go mm. and yeah. we'll do it easy it you does it easy proper and yeah. don't do anything silly yeah mm. for a budget tourer you can't go too wrong what would you say has been the most challenging part of modifying this vehicle the most challenge like maybe something that was hard to get or something that was a bit difficult to do probably mostly the design of the rear drawers well i think there'll be a lot of happy people with a 90 yeah. on finally we've got yeah, a Prado 90 yeah. yes mons will be happy <laughs> they screaming at me <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right well thank you very much for having the Prado yeah. on no worries man it was a pleasure and i love the diy mods and this, the back seat thing, yeah, that's the yeah. highlight for me, all the back yeah, stuff yeah. here. Excellent. Well, if you'd like to know more about this vehicle, there is, of course, a webpage, as always, on this Prado 90. And you can subscribe right here. <coughs> and if you'd like to support the creation of videos like this, patreon.com slash Ronnie Dahl. There's another modified down there. Cheers.